Good morning, folks. Our family is practice prepping in the bear-laden high country of the New Valley of the Sun. 3 a.m. drive to cell service, and we've got a number of stories to hit today, starting with our star and the southern coronal hole. The sunspots are small, remain quiet on the earth-facing half, but that is a serious coronal hole down on the south. With earth just north of the solar equator this time of year, it may clip us, it may not. We'll know by the end of the weekend. Without flaring or major solar wind variation, let's go to that Gulf of Mexico fire. And folks, they want you to believe a pipeline broke underwater and then a lightning strike hit the exact spot where the gas was being released. Always fun when they hand us a poo-poo platter. For those who have heard nothing but the heat wave, it was 20 below average in parts of the eastern range while the heat wave was attacking the west and record cold in parts further east. Fun how the major news stories only want to cover one side of those. And by the way, it is indeed now confirmed that the April hailstone in Texas was the state's largest recorded in history. Up next, let's go to some journal articles. It's been a rough decade for those trying to study rogue planets in the Milky Way. It began with the idea that 100 billion rogue exoplanets were traipsing around the galaxy. That idea came under scrutiny a few years later and the general number reduced, only to come back three years later as a higher population to be identified. We can finally, probably, settle in on the notion that there are likely about as many rogue planets in the galaxy as there are stars. Speaking of stars, and since we always like to note astronomical surprise, the long-standing theory that satellite galaxies lose gas and stop forming stars after close approaches to their parent galaxy is probably wrong. When it comes to large-scale galactic interactions, that's one of just a few pillars of the foundation, falling. In line with our recent examination on nova events, we begin with more confusion at the supernova level event, mischaracterizations, errors in classification, and with our favorite note on nova level blasts at the end of the abstract, expand the channels of the progenitors and environmental diversity. Veteran observers hopefully get the importance of that last part. Finally today, confusion in the dwarf nova realm. It's way less fun than its name implies. Hopefully we recall the confusion in various names for dwarf nova, the ones that can be smaller than solar flares from our sun. They're going to need to rework that classification system after this one. Folks, whenever we do get back to civilization, I've got another special video for you that should be either tonight or tomorrow. We greatly appreciate your support. Weak internet up here, though, so not going to try the power-heavy wind map data at the end. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.